super excited today to show you my finally finished staircase makeover. Started out with the honey oak color on the whole thing and now it's this beautiful dark stained top and white bottom. But this definitely did not turn out perfect. That since I know what mistakes I made, I know what mistakes to tell you not to make. So keep watching and I'll let you know what to do and what not to do to get this beautiful look on your stairs. Today I'm working on staining my banister with the Gel Stain Java from General Finishes and I will tell you during my tutorial why this is completely covered in stain, a mistake that you hopefully won't want to make. I've already done this side and I'm ready to start on this side so I can show you how to do it. I'll also show you what it looks like with just one coat of Java Stain doing the wipe off method. That gives a totally different look and what it looks like if you use the gel stain so that it gets its darkest, which is, which is what we finally went with. So you'll get to see a little bit of both sides. So let's get started. So the first thing you'll want to do is give your banister a good wipe down cleaning with mineral spirits. I'm only using the mineral spirits on the part that I'm going to stain. I'll use denatured alcohol on the bottom. And I would suggest doing that before you tape, but I got a little ahead of myself and taped first. Um, I'm just using shop cloths. Just give your banister a good cleaning, make sure it doesn't have oils on it and things that, you're, that will keep the stain from sticking. Okay, the next step is to give your banister a light sanding so that the paint, the stain has something to stick to. You're not sanding off the finish, you're just roughing it up a little bit. I'm using 220 grit sanding block and then I have a tack cloth to wipe off the, the dust. And try to go with the grain of the wood if you can. Okay, now after you finish sanding and cleaning off the dust, your next step is going to be to tape off all the areas that you don't want to get paint on. Tape down a couple of inches, at least the, the width of your brush, and then tape off your wall, and then tape everywhere on your banister that touches somewhere you're not wanting to paint. I've already taped the bottom ready for my next step. I just did all the taping at once. Just put plastic down over your carpet and your floor. All right, so we're ready to start. Let me just show you the materials I'm using. I'm using just regular blue shop towels. I've folded them up into pads for me all ready to use. Of course, the general finish is stain. Then I'm using foam brushes. I'm actually using a smaller brush, but it's all filthy dirty, and I wanted to show you a clean one. I'm actually using the two inch brush. But if you've ever seen my blog at all, you know that I hate to spend money. So I will not be using a brand new brush. I'll be using mine that I've been using the whole time, just keeping it in a plastic bag. You'll also need some gloves and to reform. I am just going to put back on my dirty ones. If you switch hands, then the inside's clean again. The other thing you want to have on hand is a big bucket to, so that you can just dump your dirty pads inside not worry about them getting on anything. So before you start, give your finish a stir. And I just keep my stir stick in the bag as well. Okay, like I said, I'm using the wipe off method. I'm not worried about getting every single spot because I'm just going to smear it around and wipe it off anyway. Do make sure you get in that crack. And then I'm just going to take my cloth. So if you are looking just to cover up that a little more old-fashioned color, this is the way to go. Nothing, nothing too bold, but it quickly and easily gets rid of that red. Remember, wipe with the grain. So I'm really wiping off almost all the stain. And I'm not worried about getting every single spot because when I wipe it off, it gets in those spots. I really 
really like the look of it when it gets darker in the cracks. So I have no problem leaving extra in the cracks. So I can make sure that it's my final rub down is with the grain. Now resist the urge you have to go back and fix anywhere up there. It has already started to dry and you will only make a mess. Just get it the next coat. I did not paint this side yet, but I'm doing that right now. My goal right now is to get it on quickly, make sure I cover all the cracks. Again, I really love the look of the dark in the cracks, so I don't try to get all of that out. important to move quickly on this part so that you don't get a line between areas. And when you're wiping off, pay close attention to this area right here. I found that that was the area that I forgot to wipe off quite often. I thought I had done it all and I hadn't, so I ended up with a lot of darker spots along these edges that were covered up as I made it darker. That's one coat. Okay, here we are on day two. I'm ready to paint again. I have let the stain dry overnight. Since I've already tested and I know that I want my stain to go completely the darkest it can, I'm not going to do another layer of wiping off the wipe off method. I will, however, put some pictures in here and show you the transition from light to dark so that you can see the different um, colors you can get with the stain in case that's what you want to do. But today I'm going to go straight to dark and not waste my time doing lots of different layers since I've already decided what look I want. So here we go. Yesterday I didn't worry about spots that didn't get covered, but this time I'm going to make sure that I get every single spot covered with stain because I'm not going to be wiping it around and smoothing it in as much. A spot that gets missed a lot is right in those cracks. That's what I've had to touch up the most, so be sure you squish your brush in there to get the color there. I'm still going to wipe it off, but I'm going to try to wipe off a lot less, and I did more at a time so that it will get a little darker. This newel post. I finally remembered what they're called. They're called newel posts. This time I'm going to put some stain on here so that instead of wiping it all off, I'm just more spreading it around.
So when doing it this dark, I found the opposite problem that I had when I was doing it light. It was easy to miss getting it dark enough on the sides before it was easy to miss wiping it off and getting it too dark. Okay, and there we go. There's day two. Notice that was much quicker than uh, wiping it all off. But okay, here we are on day three. The banister is almost as dark as I like it, but it still looks streaky, so I'm going to make it a little darker, and I'm going to try using an old rag today. I'll kind of tell you the difference of how it went with that and the shop towels. I do like that this isn't as stiff, so I'm not getting color where I don't want it because of, of the edge of the paper towel. But you definitely need some color on it before you start working. Okay, that's it for me today. The verdict on this cloth is I like it. It worked much better and I didn't feel like I had to throw it away all the time. This just helped smooth it in. You will, if you're trying to do the wipe off method though, this might not be the best because it's just going to get saturated with stain and you won't be able to get it out. But for doing it dark, I really liked it. From now on, I will just be touching up on spots that, that dry without quite as much stain. I'll probably let it dry for a few days before I add the clear coat because on the other side I'm still noticing things every day that I missed. So it's a good idea to wait a few days, grab some blue tape, mark the spots you missed so that you can get them all the next day. That's it.